All right. Well, um, first and foremost, thank you all for jumping on board on this call. It's um, it's been strange times. Um, I, I just first and foremost want you to know that um, my honest, like you know, uh, prayers have been with everyone uh, during this incredibly bizarre episode that I don't think any of us saw coming. I, I mean, I, I didn't see it coming at all. Um, um, but I, my main concern is that everybody's healthy and that everybody's been able to stay away from this virus or if you were exposed to it, that you endured it well and um, that everybody's okay. That has been my biggest concern. Um, so uh, the, the main thing I want us all to kind of like just wrap our heads around is that what we have, and I think all of you, especially the coaches and a lot of people that have been in other skating um, areas and, and things before us, what we have is extremely unique to the rest of the country it's it's like very unique in some ways it's skating so how different can skating be but in other ways it's very unique in the way that you know we've been able to in a very non-skating town be able to build something that has impacted the community as it has in such a big way that learn to skate went from like four people to like, I don't even know how many people or a thousand people are doing it now. So, but it's, you know, everywhere I go um, and I see people, they're so grateful for the, the, you know, the skate school, for the offerings, for the fact that they can get their kids into um, high sports, no matter what their, their, you know, their dreams or aspirations or goals are. I mean, they really just sort of like, you know, the predators are, they own this town. Right, and the Bridgestone Arena is the second busiest building in the in the United States, and so you know there's there's a lot of excitement around the Predators and hockey and ice sports, but also um, there's so many people that get on the ice that just fall in love with the idea that they can do something really fun and unique, and they can express themselves, they can get into figure skating, and so you know the skating club was you know formed, you know, Music City Skating Club became. Um, you know, the whatever skating club. And so, you know, it's, I hate to say my own name, but even though I'm wearing a shirt with my name on it, which is weird. Um, but what we have is so unique and it's it's probably, and I, I, I don't have the exact numbers on this, uh, Paula might, cause that's, you know, kind of the, all those things are, you know, kind of in her wheelhouse. I do believe we have the fastest growing program in the country. I, I do believe that. I mean, when you think of where we were and where we are today, and we do have, and um, this is argued, I wish we had heat, but um, we do have the finest facilities of anyone in the country. I can't imagine there being finer facilities anywhere in the country. So um, you, you marry that to um, a phenomenal staff and volunteers like me. And, um, and you know, you're going to hear from everyone today and everybody has, you know, kind of their um, State of the Union address to give. But um, I just want to encourage everybody, you know, there's so many plates in the air and they're all spinning and, and, you know, there's so many things that we have to look after and take care of that, you know, there's, you know, it, it, it's going to be really fun and challenging to see how all of this blossoms into what it's going to be over time. And it's going to continue to develop and grow and morph and, and, um, blossom in, in different areas you know we don't really know and all we can do is put our best efforts down whether it be in um you know building a learn to skate you know um, expanding the service of the all-star program building a figure skating program in every identity whether it be singles uh, who knows what's going to go on with pairs dance is huge i know that's going to be a big part of our offerings synchro um and then you know anything else we can think of you know, it, we have all the tools, all the amazing um, natural resource to be able to um, build something, continue to build something spectacular. So I'm honored um, to be a part of it. I, I just, I, I think it's so cool that we get to guide um, our skating community, our skating family um, into whatever goals whatever dreams, whatever <clears throat> aspirations they have. And, and um, I just <clears throat> want to uh, thank everybody for their, the part they play. I love being a volunteer. It's hard to fire volunteers, so that's good, you know. <laughs> but it's, <clears throat> excuse me, my morning fog. 
Um, I'm just so honored and proud to be associated with everyone on this on this call today. So thank you all for participating and thank you for bringing your unique talents, skill sets, abilities, and love for our sport to the table because I, I really, I really am honored and, and humbled to be a part of this. Also, I want to thank everybody for jumping on all the Zoom calls to keep our skaters um, engaged and excited and motivated. Um, <clears throat> I've done a few. Every Friday, we're doing these really fun um, interviews with iconic skaters. Yesterday, I sweat right through my shirt talking to Nathan Chen for an hour. Talk about pressure. Um, but everyone that's come on board, Christopher Dean and Brian Boitano, Christian Maguchi, um, they've all, you know, I think they've broken it down to let everybody know that no matter what your circumstance, you know, Nathan Chen being the youngest of five and, and really not having any money, you know, that those stories really resonate with our skaters that it allows them to kind of go, well, they, they came from very humble, modest beginnings. Well, maybe I could do that too. Or maybe I want to go to an ice show, or maybe I want to, you know, just <clears throat> test or whatever the goals are. I think it's really extraordinary that from three-year-olds all the way up to adult skating, um, you know, programs exist to allow everyone to really thrive and to um, have everything they need to succeed. So I'm going to step away. I want to thank you all. I'm so grateful. And again, humbled to be associated with this um, kind of skating movement that's been created. And I'm really excited to hear what everybody has to say. So thank you all. I'll mute. <laughs> thank you, Scott. Uh, so that's a perfect opportunity to remind everyone, if you are not currently presenting, if you would please mute your Zooms so that whoever the speaker is has the key screen at, the, at that given time. Um, so um, I'm uh, Michelle Thornbury. I'm the president of the Scott Hamilton Skating Club and I work with Scott. And what I'm going to talk about first is why, why a skating club? Um, we're very blessed in that we uh, have the support of the Scott Hamilton Skating Academy, the Nashville Predators, the Ford Ice Center. So unlike skating clubs in many cities, we don't have to purchase ice, we don't have to sell ice, um, and we don't have to hire and um, manage the coaches. Those are all done by the Academy and Ford Ice Center. So what do we do? Well, we, what we actually do is we're, we're community-minded um, in the skating club. We are there to provide resources and support for our athletes and our coaches. Um, some of the things we do are um, an annual field trip for kids from a Title I school um, where they come and skate and they get a hoodie and um, lunch and an opportunity to tour the venue, um, Fordyce Center. We uh, have a junior board that does community outreach projects. We host club ice events, which are free skating opportunities for our members to come out and just enjoy being on the ice. Forget about training for a minute and, and just remember what they love most about skating. Um, we um, run fundraisers. We run our annual Scott Hamilton Invitational con um, competition every summer. Um, we also do test sessions, which allow athletes to be judged to move up in the sport. And um, Patty Cooper will talk a little bit more about that in a couple minutes. Um, and so some of the things like competing in US figure skating events um, and testing, you are required to be a club member in order to do those things. So those are, those are some of the why you have to, and then why you want to is because of the community component of this. Um, and, uh, memberships run from July 1st until June 30th of every year. So we're coming up on the start of a new membership season. And um, so that's something that you'll be seeing more about in the next couple weeks to consider moving forward. So that is, that's about the club. I'm gonna pass on to uh, Patty Cooper to talk about testing. Patty, you're muted. Okay. Okay, now Everybody I hear Patty now. Yeah, it okay. said that the host had muted me, so I couldn't unmute. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I didn't. But sorry, this is my first time doing this. 
Uh, my name is Patty Cooper. For those of you who don't know who I am, I am the test chair of the Scott Hamilton Skating Club and uh, mom to Izzy Cooper, who's a, a fellow skater. Um, and I just want to talk briefly about skating, about testing in the, in the sport. And if you have any questions, write that in the chat so that Michelle can read off your questions and then hopefully we can get them answered. If I can't answer them, then another coach could. Um, there's five different disciplines that, that are tested. Those are moves in the field, free skating, pairs, um, partnered and solo pattern dances, and free dance and solo free dance. Uh, so what does that mean? If you don't know the testing structure, what does that mean? Uh, moves in the field is your basic um, building blocks of skating skills. So, and they progress and they build on each other. And so as you progress in the sport, think of it as, if, if you're not familiar with skating, think of it as uh, karate, earning a belt, or um, Boy Scouts, earning, earning different levels in Boy Scouts to get to an Eagle Scout. And so this is, this is how a skater builds their resume. This is how a skater moves on. This is how a skater decides whether they want to be a competitive skater or not. Um, and this is how a skater meets their own personal goals. And that's through testing. And they, um, judges throughout US figure skating come in for our test sessions and then they, they, they give a score and a skater can either pass or they have to retry it. And it's not uncommon for a skater to have to retry a test. And that's not, that's not something to be upset about. That's, that's just a normal part of, this, of the sport. So with that, if there's any questions, I don't see any. Oh, there we go. Hang on. Uh, uh, Scott said I had to retry more times than I can count. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's every every skater has had to retry. Um, you know what? The, the the levels are pre preliminary. If you if you've got a skater whose coach says, "Hey, you need to start thinking about testing," they're probably talking about moves in the field, um, and. Uh, as you progress in the sport, as you move up in the sport, uh, you're going to be taking junior, senior tests, gold tests, and the, the pass rate for, for initial pass rate is probably around 30%. So that's pretty low, and, and they're pretty difficult. And so it's a huge accomplishment when, when a skater reaches that level. Any other questions for Patty right now? And if you don't have them, if we have time at the end, we'll take questions at the end and we'll also be sending out follow up emails so that you can ask questions there. No. It looks like no more questions right now. Um, I accidentally switched, uh, skipped over Karen Serbrook speaking about safe sports. So thank you, Patty. And we're going to um, unpin you and go to Karen now. I'm sorry, everybody. That's fine. Hello, everyone. First of all, it's so great to see so many faces that I'm used to seeing, uh, you know, every day at the rink. I miss everybody. Um, I'm Karen Serbrook. I'm mom to Jackson, and I'm also on the board of the Scott Hamilton Skating Club. I'm going to talk a little bit about safe sport. Uh, if you have any questions about that, feel free to type them in the chat, and Michelle can pass them on. I'll answer them as best I can. I am not the club safe sport chair. Leslie couldn't be here, but I can possibly answer them or at least pass them on to people who can. Um, first of all, our club is committed to the safety and well-being of all of our members and Safe Sport is a really useful tool to uh, kind of accomplish that. The U.S. Center for Safe Sport is an independent nonprofit organization that's committed to ending all forms of abuse in sport. They develop policies and procedures to prevent the abuse as well as report abuse if you suspect it or see it so that someone can investigate it and get to the bottom of it and make sure that everyone's safe. Um, the USFSA has a handbook for safe sport that's available on their website, which we encourage everyone to check out and read. Um, if you yourself want to get safe sport certified, you can. It's a fairly easy process. All of the board members of the club are, which helps us be able to volunteer in more positions and things like that. It also gives us just a better understanding of safe sport in general so we can really understand the policies and work to make sure that they are always in effect with all of our events that we do, all of our competitions. Everything like that is always uh, in compliance with all the safe sport. Um, safe sport concerns, if you have them, can be reported anonymously by calling in, or there's a website where you can do that. We'll provide that information in the follow-up email. So if anyone has any questions, 
That's about it. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, thank you, Karen. Yeah. And Paula is up next. And she's going to talk about Zoomscape, et cetera. And I'm going to unmute you, Paula. Uh, Hi, everybody. Paula Trujillo. Um, I am, I was a skater. Uh, and then I, you know, kind of flourished in ice capades for 10 years. And then I became the mother of two skaters. And that's, well, in ice capades is where I met Scott. And then um, eventually I moved here on a red eye with two suitcases to help uh, build the program from the beginning. I'm just gonna share my screen and go through uh, just kind of the, the life of the Academy. There we go. Hold please. There. Okay, so welcome. Um, our mission is, uh, the Scott Hamilton Skating Academy's uh, mission is to make skating available to people of all ages, abilities, and descriptions, at the same time creating an environment of joy and learning how to skate. Um, further, the mission of our combined programs is to fulfill the uh, goals and vision of the Scott Hamilton Skating Academy, Ford Ice Center, and the Nashville Predators in partnership with the club and Sharp for Sports to develop beginner skaters through world-class athletes in a joyful, fun, and creative um, atmosphere. Um, the mission of the Learn to Skate side of the program is through great guest care um, and our Academy certified coaching staff um, to teach skaters uh, to learn to skate. They learn more than skating. They learn uh, sharper focus, wilder creativity, what it feels like to fly. Skating teaches everyone um, that with a little imagination, a dash of confidence, and a brush of bravery, they can soar toward anything. Uh, the history, we did start with four skaters. And then our first year, we did receive the Kickstart Award, which was the most, um, the biggest program in the very first year of existence. 2016, we were in the top 20, recognized by US, uh, Learn to Skate USA. 2017, we were in the top 10 with 1,001 members. 2018, um, we received uh, two grants to start our Scott's All Stars program, which was pretty exciting. And then in 2018, we were the number one in the South and the fifth in the country. And I have no idea where we're gonna end up this year in the current situation. So, um, steps. These are all the steps, the roadmap to skill development. It starts with our Scott's Tots and basic one and two and hockey one through three and Scott's All-Stars. And then we move to the fundamental skating skills, which is basic three through six, hockey three and four, then learn to skate plus a sharp class which Corey will talk about. And then learn to skate camps and clinics are available. Um, and then we get to some of our more specialty and advanced things, pre-free skate, free skate levels, hockey five, intro to specialty classes, and then learn to skate plus sharp again. And then specialty classes are your synchro. These are all, these, they all have curriculum under learn to skate USA. We have synchro program, we have ice dance and pairs, theater on ice, adult fitness, and the new one is Aspire. It's um, the, their bridge program from Learn to Skate, takes a skater to, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, it takes a skater from uh, Learn to Skate to the freestyle sessions, kind of a good transition there. Um, our commitment is driven by joy, guest care, knowledge, well-educated staff, informed and joyful part-time staff, and safety is our top priority. Um, Affordable, fun, fits in busy, busy family schedules, uh, physical development, social development, emotional and measured skill development through our um, skill evaluations at the end of a session. Um, it teaches the fundamentals of skating when building confidence, while building confidence and skills. Um, the curriculum is progressive, so it builds on itself and it, um, to success, promotes health and well-being and skaters are pretty much equipped with everything they need to make a choice after that point of where they want to go with their career. Um, parents, we just have some fun roles for you guys. It's important to make your skating experience fun, positive. Um, always ask your skaters what they're learning um, in the car on the way home. It's pretty fun. They like to talk about those things and actually join your kids for a lesson. We have adult classes too, so get out there. 
these are all of the things that um, can happen after, um, move this over, um, some of the specialty things. So Shawnee will talk more about synchro. Uh, we just started a, a moves in the field class is coming in um, July and that's to help our new synchro skaters get their first two tests ready for um, uh, testing with the US figure skating program after they join. Our gift from um, the academy will be a gift certificate to that skater. We will pay for their um, initial introductory membership to the club. So then all you'd have to do is pay for your family member along with that, and that will start in January. Um, dance and Peter will talk about dance. We have adult socials, a lot of fun adult. We are committed to doing adult events per month. And once a week, we have an adult off-ice fitness class with Siobhan. Uh, we have two camps a year in our facility. We have our holiday show competition class, which is just getting your skaters. Um, they get a free pair of skates. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Our dreams begin here. Speed is going to be new coming up. This is designed by Jackie Munzel and um, Cody and a few other coaches. They've been meeting during this pause in programming to um, really kind of take our skaters that are in Learn to Skate and um, develop their skating skills better to push them into hockey with more skill set and proper stroking. Uh, and then I'll talk just a little bit about um, the two programs that Learn to Skate either feeds into or out of, which is our predecessor program and our little preds. Cody will talk about All-Stars. Corey's going to hit you up with all the sharp stuff. And Theater on Ice, that is coming this summer as well. Um, synchro. That just kind of gives you, I'll share this with everybody To Michelle, you can send it out, but I'll, I won't read all that and Shawnee can go into it. But it really is, um, this is our new synchro team right here. Um, there's a few more over here. I just couldn't get them on the screen. But it's pretty exciting. Um, I love at the end of every Saturday afternoon, every parent is clapping. Um, Aspire is the program I was talking about. It's brand new. I happened to sit on the, the committee to kind of help mold it. And it was really exciting. Um, it's really about making it cost effective. Um, off ice classes, on ice classes to help a skater go from learn to skate. So it's not, it's not such a sticker shock. It just goes from learn to skate to freestyle and then wherever they want to go from there, whether it's synchro sharp um, classes to become an, a competitive skater, it kind of just builds up from there. It's a good stepping stone. Our adult programs, we have all of these. Um, once a month, we have an adult social, which is an hour of on ice classes. Um, an off-ice class followed by a little bit of wine and cheese, super fun. Um, the adult fitness class will kick your booty. That is pretty fun. Uh, Siobhan leads that. And then we have just been um, asked to do, we are not going to host it this year. We're going to, we have some other ideas in the making to make this camp. We just can't host it in May because everybody that is coming is either 57 or older and they're afraid to fly. So we have determined it is time to cancel that, but they are, they've already secured their spot for next year. Um, holiday show, super fun. That's in the winter. We start in October. Dreams begin. That's our basic skills competition. Um, and then our competition class, it offers a chance to prepare um, in a really uh, um, affordable way. Uh, you can sign up for the competition class, get prepared by the coach with whatever your level is. They put music to it. And it's only, it's super cheap. It's like one, and you get a free pair of skates with it, and a parent beating, and um, the competition entry fee. Um, that's the speed one we just talked about with with it's superior power, excellent edges, and discipline coming in July. Predecessor, this is an um, if you have hockey skaters, this is the program where if your kid is not quite ready for the league and still needs a little more skating skills, um, they they can go and they can skate on their own. Uh, and they've already done a goal, learn to skate or little Prince program. It's the emphasis is on core skating. And then with a little bit of, um, they start teaching them a little bit of the game, a little bit of the rules, a little bit of the positions. Um, but it's, it's in a really, um, a friendly environment. Um, little Preds, it's, uh, must have completed a learn to skate program before signing up. Um, little Preds is a multi-week class. It's focused on the fundamentals. They have, um, Nashville Predators alumni that show up. And each skater in the Little Preds receives a full head-to-toe uh, to -to -toe gear. Um, and that's it. That's all I got. Anybody have any questions? I don't see any in the chat. 
What's that? You can, you can bring them up at the end too if you have questions or, or we'll have email addresses for everyone in our follow-up email. Thank you, Paula. Carry on. Corey, it's you. I'm trying to, You're up. I'm trying to unmute Corey and... I can do it. Spotlight I'm, um, hold on a second. I'm going to pull something up for you guys too. For some reason, I couldn't do it while the full screen was being used, but just give me one second. So, okay. Hi, I'm Corey Aid, and I am just thankful that all of you guys are here because I really do believe that uh, staying in good communication with our with our clientele is really, really important. And I also believe that parents should be empowered to make the decision that works best for their family and their athletes and their their philosophies. And I recognize that not all families are the same. Resources are different, as Scott. Uh, mentioned goals are different um, priorities are different and you know the the value of sports in different homes is different so recognizing that I think um, very early in my coaching has made me super passionate about offering uh, total transparency to families that I work with and I've done that um, I did it just kind of as an independent contractor all along really wanting to be able to um, give families an option, meaning, hey, I, I want to coach every kid that wants to skate, but as I sort of refined my vision for my coaching, I realized that I wanted to focus on the, the competitive track. I wanted to focus on building um, US figure skating athletes, ultimately not knowing where that would take me and my young athletes at the time, but knowing that with every goal, a professional goal that I set for myself, um, I was also helping uh, athletes along their journey accomplish goals that I never thought possible when I, when I first started coaching. So that was a, an eye-opening experience. My first generation of athletes um, stuck with it. I'm proud to say I had a very low attrition rate, lots of loyalty, really get great group of um, parents and skaters. And because of that, I was able to um, really truly understand what the full journey looked like beginning to end. End meaning um, that the skater was no longer interested in skating or that their, their path changed slightly. Maybe they did go to synchro. I had skaters uh, go into dance. I had skaters go into pairs. I had skaters decide that they wanted to pursue the college of their dreams and really pull back on the amount of hours that they were skating. Um, and then I have had several skaters at national championships, um, a few at world championships, one at the Olympics. And so, and then now uh, I think one of my proudest moments was that one of my former skaters who I took from a very young age was a judge at our last Scott Hamilton skating invitational. So, he went on to be the president of the Michigan uh, University of Michigan Figure Skating Club and now is a judge. So every path is an acceptable path. I'm not by any means here to say that every athlete should pursue the competitive route, but what I'd like to offer through the SHARP programming is the opportunity to pursue the competitive track if that's what a family and an athlete are interested in. So I pulled up our website just so that you guys could see it if you've never seen it before. Um, I think it's pretty easy to navigate. You'll see, you know, some of our philosophy. This is uh, our staff, um, what we offer, you know, where we're located. Our hub is the Ford Ice Centers, and that was part of our, um, upon arriving at, uh, in Nashville, that was part of our partnership was that we were rebranding. We originally had different coloring and a different logo, um, but rebranding meant that we were going to fit beautifully under the umbrella of the uh, National Predators and then the smaller umbrella of the um, Scott Hamilton Skating Academy. So 
what we hope to do is just be yet another program that athletes have access to. So I know I only have five minutes. I will not babble on and on. But um, if you want to navigate this, this website, and certainly if you have questions, Heather, who is the admin, is here. And she's at her computer 24-7, so she can always answer questions. So any parents that are here that want to play around on the website and see what we have available, we've got extensive classes during um, stay-at-home time and uh, lots of awesome opportunities. And I'm just really excited to get back to the rink and um, demonstrate what we have to offer. So thank you so much for having me and pulling us in, Scott and Paula, underneath this umbrella. We are happy to be here. Thank you, Corey. Okay, I'm muting Cody Howard next and making him spotlight video. Cody, you, no, you're still muted. Mute. Okay, there we go. Hey guys, um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Cody Howard. Um, I have been a coach with the Scott Hamilton Skating Academy um, for coming on, I'm um, about four and a half years. Um, prior to that, I was a mental health social worker, and I've taken a lot of those skills and brought them into my coaching. Um, as Scott er said earlier, and Paul mentioned it in our um, statement of purpose, um, we're really working as an organization to ensure that skating is available for everyone of any kind of specific need or ability. And with the Scott's All-Stars program, we're able to do that. Our All-Stars program is an adaptive skating program. Um, we don't really have any set parameters. We are working with individuals of any kind of need or age. Um, as long as they and their family come to us and just say, hey, we're interested and we love skating, we find a way to make it work. So um, with our program, uh, we are two days a week um, and we really follow a holistic approach. Um, with our approach, we're trying to address um, psychosocial, emo emotional, and physical needs. Um, we're trying to build a whole person, not just a, a specific skating athlete. Um, our normal classes uh, range in group size, but typically our cutoff is around 10 skaters. Um, and right now, um, we try to work to have as close as we can to a two to one coach to skater ratio, or excuse me, skater to coach ratio. Um, and we use a lot of different types of adaptive equipment, adaptive um, adaptive equipment that we've been able to kind of uh, build a nice little, um, uh, the words escaping me. We've got various things that we're able to use. We use our hockey crash pads as a way to hold ourselves up or to assist our skaters. We have walkers. Um, we have lots of different toys and things to motivate our skaters. And that is there to protect our skaters, but also to protect our, um, our coaches as well. Um, we do our on ice time on um, Wednesdays and Saturdays and on ice usually lasts for about 30 minutes. After the on ice section of our class, we actually do a dry land portion as well. With dry land, we are doing various activities, again, trying to build the whole person. Um, we do yoga, we do ballet, we do core strengthening, cardio, dry land, hockey. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting a few. Um, but the, the kids really, really love that. And it, we've seen that that really, really helps them not only engage with the class and the process, but it also aids them in building the strength and the skills needed for on the ice. So through their growth on, on the dry land side of things, we see them really accelerate as athletes on the ice. So we see that portion of our class and of our program as being crucial. Um, as I said, we, we have those classes on Wednesday and Saturday. Um, the on-ice portion lasts for approximately 30 minutes. We do about a 15-minute change-out period, and then we do 30 to 40 minutes of dry land. Um, and the class runs alongside the normal learn-to-skate schedule, so it's a seven-week class, um, and we follow the same, same exact schedule that they do. And I'm not sure who's next. But Any I'm questions? Yeah. Let's see. John Morrow said, thank you for the great presentations and is going to get Colin enrolled in testing. And yes, and then Karen Serbrook also said, the All-Star program takes part in the Skating Academy Holiday Show. It's usually the, one of the highlights of the show. Um, 
It's pretty, pretty awesome. And we've had a lot of our junior coaches, they're not officially called that anymore, junior coaches um, help with the All-Star program as well. So it's a wonderful opportunity for um, our club um, members to get involved in, um, in learning to coach and working with these awesome kids. Yeah, and we, we've, we've worked to really make sure that some of our, our club um, members have, have become mentors to the kids. And we've really seen not only participants flourish, but we've been able to see our mentors flourish as well. We've seen, seen kiddos come out of their shell um, and really kind of find leadership skills. And they, our club members are really um, a cornerstone of, of what we do. Thank you, Cody. Okay, next up is Shawnee. I'm gonna make her spotlight and unmute. Unmute, unmute. Um, there we go. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Thank you, Michelle. It's so good to see everyone's faces. This is such a strange time, but it's good that we can kind of all see each other here. And I hope your families are doing well. Uh, my name is Shawnee Smith. I've been coaching with the Scott Hamilton Skating Academy and Club since 2018. Um, prior to that, I represented Team USA with the Hayden Nuts internationally in synchronized skating. I'm a national champion and a world's bronze medalist. Um, here, I'm a full-time coach with the Academy. And recently, uh, I've been working on developing the Hamilton Harmonies synchronized skating team. Um, synchronized skating is a team sport in which 8 to 20 skaters perform a program together. It uses the same judging system as singles, pairs, ice dance, and is characterized by teamwork, speed, intricate formations, and challenging step sequences. Synchronized skating is a discipline of skating that involves many aspects of the other disciplines, but is unique because it is a team sport. So depending on the level, um, there are a range of things that you have to do, but they go all the way from snowplow Sam, so the baby babies, through adult levels, and at the higher levels in junior and senior, you are able to compete internationally. Um, there are also many adult teams around the country. Um, hopefully that's something we can do here one day with our awesome adult skating community. Um, Throughout the country, there are over 600 registered teams in the United States and 5,000 athletes that compete at sectional championships in the US. Um, obviously, there are a lot of benefits to participating in a team sport. And synchronized skating is a great way for our athletes to compete in the sport that they love while working in a team-oriented place. Um, to have a, sex, a successful synchro team, each individual skater has to hold their own and kind of be a great skater individually, which includes freestyle, ice dance, moves in the field testing. Um, and as the coach of this team, I'm encouraging all of the skaters to continue with private lessons and to develop their skills individually so that we can start off strong and have a really solid team going forward. Huh? Um, earlier this year, starting in January, we started an intro to synchro class in our Learn to Skate program. It had huge traction. We had around 18 skaters of a similar level every week come in and learn the skills of synchro. None of the kids here, except for maybe one that moved from somewhere else, has done synchro before. And the transformation in the seven week period was incredible. We did an exhibition at the Dreams Begin Here competition, and it was so exciting to see how everyone just learned quickly and bonded as a team. And that hopefully moving forward, depending on what happens this summer, we <laughs> will be able to have a camp to develop more synchro specific skills and, of course, develop our individual athletes as skaters in general who may or may not choose synchro as their discipline. Um, what I love the most about synchronized skating is you can do it as well as competing in other areas. So you don't have to just choose synchro. Um, personally, I tested in every, every discipline, um, competed in every discipline, 
and eventually landed on Synchro, which ended up being a great choice because of the team aspect. And I went uh, as far as you can go to the world championships and it just is such a great opportunity for our athletes to bond in this community, especially. Um, our plan for the future in future years and this year, depending on how things go, is to keep everyone going and develop a team that will eventually compete at our mid, mid championships um, in Notre Dame in 2021 and eventually, hopefully, have a national competitive team. And that's the goal. During um, quarantine, we've been doing a class on Thursday mornings at 10 a.m. If you haven't been participating in that and you think your kid might be interested, we have a bunch of kids that come every week. So send your kids over. We've been learning about Synchro. We have a warm up that we've been doing, um, which we've been going over about every other week. So we'll get your kids up to, up to speed. And hopefully when we're back on the ice, we'll see you for our Synchro class. That's all, Michelle. Thanks, Shawnee. So we had a couple of comments here. Um, let's see, from Scott. Loves having Synchro in our program. Great job building it, Shawnee. Absolutely. From Jen Toy, can't wait to see Synchro grow. From Kit Gardner, Molly loves being part of the Synchro program. So much, th thanks so much for developing it here. Francesca's dying to get back on the ice and back to Synchro. Uh, Scott said the atmosphere at World Synchro Championships is electric and tons of fun. And Patty Cooper said we will have specific times available for the synchro skaters for testing later this summer. Be on the lookout and we'll work hand in hand with Shawnee to get those dates up to you. Yay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Um, okay, I'm going to unmute Paula for a second. And because I think she's got something to jump in here real quick with and then we'll then we'll move on to Siobhan. There you go. I'm going to share my screen. This is the future of ice dancing and synchro. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Put we'll a few go. rhinestones on it. They look like they're in unison, don't they? They are in unison. Yeah, so, all right, there we go. All right, I'll unshare and you can mute me again. <laughs> okay. Thanks for making me giggle. Thanks for allowing me to make <laughs> Always. You're always good for a giggle. Okay, so now we're going to Siobhan um, Karam Godwin, and I'm unmuting her, and she and Peter are going to talk about ice dance. Thanks, Michelle. Hi, everyone. Um, I know most of you, but for those of you that don't know me, I'm Siobhan Godwin. Um, I've been coaching for 10 years. I originally come from Canada as a Canadian and international ice dancer, ice dancer for 10 years, or sorry, 20 years. And I moved to Nashville just over a year ago and joined the Scott Hamilton Skating Academy and Sharp Teams. Um, so a little bit of dance background. Ice dance is a discipline of figure skating that has been around since the 1800s as heritage of ballroom and ballet on ice. By the 1900s, skaters throughout the world were ice dancing and national organizations began overseeing dance competitions. Ice dance was formally added to the World Figure Skating Championships in 1952 and it became an Olympic sport in 1976. So dance consists of a couple compromised of a man and a woman. This is similar um, and often confused by the general population to pair skating. However, ice dance does not feature overhead lifts or jumps or throw jumps. Ice dance is inspired from different aspects of dance and really emphasizes musical interpretation, rhythm, technical steps and turns, and movements that are complementary or in unison by two partners. Um, its beauty comes from creativity, unique choreography, theatrical expression, and innovative elements in the program. It continues to evolve each season. So originally couples were to perform two pattern or compulsory dances, an original dance, which we used to call an OD, and a free dance at each competition. Um, in 2010, the pattern dances and OD were eliminated at higher levels of ice dance, and couples were required to perform a short dance, which is now called a rhythm dance, and that combines elements of each, as well as a free dance. In the US, um, there are six different levels of ice dance, so pre-juve, juve, intermediate, novice, junior, and senior, and senior is what you all watch on television. Um, the pre-juve to novice levels perform two pattern dances, as done traditionally at each competition, as well as a free dance. At this level, the skaters train throughout the season, take part in competitions during the summer from July to September, and compete at a sectional ice dance challenge in the fall. There's a competition for each of the Eastern, Midwestern, and Pacific sections. 
the juvenile to novice levels go on if they qualify to compete at a U.S. dance final, which is basically like a nationals competition uh, for these skaters. The junior and senior couples perform a rhythm dance and free dance at each competition, and they move on from sectionals if they qualify to compete at the U.S. National Figure Skating Championships, and then potentially on to the ISU World Figure Skating Championships, and even the Winter Olympic Games every four years. So pre-juve dancers are often as young as seven or eight years old, so the couples begin to learn difficult dance elements at a young age, such as twizzles, spins together, lifts, and footwork and dance holds. The younger we start the development of the dance teams, the more likely their chance of down the road. Um, the barrier to forming partnerships is often due to the limited male participation in figure skating as well as interest in dance. Um, I'm biased but I believe that every male skater should be exposed to dance and para skating at some point in their development um, as statistically they'll have more of a chance of success down the road if they want to compete at the World Olympic Games and that's simply due to the lower numbers of participants in these fields of skating. Now many skaters especially the girls um, take an interest in ice dance early on which is where solo dance comes in. So solo dance offers skaters without a partner a similar exciting and competitive environment to participate and develop their ice dance skills without having to train with a partner. Um, it's different than freestyle, it does not involve jumping, but some of both dance and freestyle elements can overlap in this discipline, like spins, footwork, and edge elements. The National Solo Dance Series began in 2010 to 11. Um, it's a series of competitions that skaters compete at throughout the season from March to August to earn points, and then they try to qualify for the National Solo Dance Final, which is held in September. There are three different events in solo dance, and skaters can qualify for the final in one or in all of these events. So the solo pattern dance event includes levels from preliminary to international. It's comprised of two pattern dances at each level. The combined events run from juve up to senior levels. Um, for juve, intermediate, and novice levels, skaters perform one pattern pattern dance and a pre-dance at the junior and senior levels. Um, they perform the rhythm dance and a solo pre-dance, which is similar to couples dance. Shadow dance is the third event, and that may be comprised of two females, two males, or one female and one male skating a pattern dance side by side in unison with each other. This one's a fun event for good friends to train together and compete together. Um, it can also be a great event for couples dancers to compete side by side and further improve their unison and technical skills. So at our club, we have four girls competing in the solo dance series this year. Um, it's been such a fun experience so far. We attended a solo dance camp in Dallas in February. Um, our skaters got to meet over 60 girls from throughout the US who will be competing this year. Um, I know they made lifelong friends and they're very excited to reconnect with this community throughout the season. Solo dance, I believe, is a fantastic way to develop ice dance skills for any skaters waiting for the right partner to come along. It also gives skaters a chance to qualify for a nationals level competition, which can be extremely difficult with the high number and level of freestyle skaters in the US. Um, and lastly, it complements and shares skills from the discipline of freestyle. So I, I believe it'll only have a positive effect on the skaters overall success. Um, so I'm honored and proud to work alongside all of our fellow ice dance coaches at the club. Um, Peter Sassmore, Rob Peel, we welcome you. I know he's starting this summer. Um, and Yuri, I'm not gonna try to say his last name, but um, we're thrilled to already have a renowned program um, of ice dance in Nashville. And feel free to reach out to myself or to any of the other ice dance coaches with questions. Thank you. I'm gonna read a couple of these comments here before we jump to Peter, who will continue on the ice dance conversation. Um, Scott says, Siobhan, you and Peter are truly a blessing to our program and he's grateful for you both. We all are. I agree that, and Scott says, I agree everyone should participate. They will understand music, rhythm, and quality in very important ways. And then Rob Peel, who Siobhan just mentioned, um, said a lot of synchro skaters participate in solo dance because it fits very nicely with that competitive schedule. And Jen Toy says, Adriana and Riley have had a great time doing the solo dance program. It's been really neat to see this grow. Okay, so I'm going to unmute Peter Sassmore now and switch over to Spotlight Video, Peter. Hi everybody, it's um, great to see you all here and I hope everybody's staying safe and healthy and uh, enduring this uh, setback uh, or set forward depending on how we're using this time. Um, I know we're having a great time at home getting along with the family real well and it's, it's been a blessing uh, to a lot of a uh, degree. Anyway, for people who don't know me, my name is Peter Sassmore. I've been coaching for about, well, 35 years plus. Um, the last three have been here in Nashville and I'm really blessed to be here. It's, it's an awesome place to, uh, to train and work with individuals uh, daily. 
Um, my specialty is uh, test track dancing, competitive dance, and adult figure skating. And currently I'm a national and international adult figure skating competitor as well with uh, my uh, partner and student, uh, Debbie Georges. And that's a lot of fun. We're, we're having a great time and uh, trying to stay in shape and enjoy uh, the sport as much as we can. Um, so USFS Test Track Dance is comprised of 23 dance tests broken into seven categories, preliminary to gold. Um, and there are four different types of uh, test tracks. There's standard, which um, Siobhan had talked a little bit about. Um, that's a requirement of the USFS to pass these standard tests to compete in standard couples dance. And there, in that level, there's 23 dances, like I said, and the student would do a pair with a skater such as myself or a, a, a partner. And then they would also have to do a solo at that same test of that same dance, starting at the silver level. Um, and this is the qualifying for all the, whatever standard competitions uh, that are available to these skaters in the USFS. Uh, then there's adult, and that requires only a pair to do these dance tests, no solos. And this qualifies uh, the, for adult figure skating championships and, and competitions uh, that USFS offers the adult track. Uh, then there's also an over 50, and these have relaxed, uh, sort of a relaxed passing qualifications. So, you know, if, if patterns don't um, fill out the entire rink or edges are not quite as deep as some of the younger skaters, uh, it's appropriate to that level and that uh, age group. And there are, again, no solo required in this level. Um, and then as Siobhan was talking about the solo dance series, there is one more level that is the solo dance test level. And on this structure, there is no pair involved at all. Uh, skaters will skate solo straight through. They can get her, their gold medal in solo dance, uh, but this qualifies them only for solo competition and does not qualify them for anything else. Um, in addition, there is a free dance structure and these tests are uh, for each pertinent level. There is an adult free dance structure. Uh, there's uh, the standard free dance structure and so forth. Uh, and so there's an over 50 as well. Now the benefits, as Scott had said earlier, it's a very disciplined approach to basic technique in skating. And skaters learn specific steps set to uh, specific tempos and characters of rhythm. And that develops uh, a strong understanding of edges, patterns, and relationships of the steps to uh, context of music and character and expression. And I think um, I've seen so many people even involved in uh, standard men's figure skating or ladies figure skating that have done dance as a supplement and it's just really propelled their career. In fact, one of the, um, one of the kids back in the San Francisco area uh, was doing solo dance series as he was competing in um, junior men uh, one season and he was doing the, the, the series just to get kind of his short program out there without jumps uh, and he made it as creative as possible and uh, got great feedback all the way through the series and ended up uh, doing quite well at nationals that season. So um, it, it is a great supplement for anybody that's uh, looking for something a little different, um, but also adding to all the contributing factors of, of an excellent skater. So uh, thank you, Peter. Um, the, <laughs> there's some fun chatter back and forth about um, is there an over 60 testing track? <laughs> um, Patty said, we'll call it the master's program, and Scott can be our first skater. And Rob, Ste Rob Peel said, you can dance till 90 plus. Uh, so we all, we all, I think, especially as adults, I think we're finding that, that dance has been a, a really wonderful way to stay active in skating uh, without even those, that, those of us that need to test or compete. It's such a strong community. Everybody makes friends lifelong worldwide. It's, it's fantastic. It really is. Okay, so I'm going to, that's all of our presenters right now. I'm going to open up to questions and further comments. One last really quick thing Jean Colello asked me to um, mention, and I, we're still looking at Peter, but oh, there I am. Okay. Um, is um, just remind you that the um, 
club, U.S. figure skating club membership years run from July 1st until June 30th of every year. So we're just wrapping up the 2019-2020 year and we will have memberships opening up, opening up um, probably in a few weeks. Um, registration, probably, um, I think we usually do it around the 1st of June. I'll have to double check that. We'll keep you posted on that. And um, for those that are joining the club for the first time, um, there is the bridge program that Paula talked about. If they're coming out of the Learn to Skate program, or if they're joining um, for the first time without having gone through the Learn to Skate program, there are uh, discounted rates for first year members. Also, um, every member must um, have a parent member attached to them if they're under the age of 18. Um, and uh, the, if you go to scotthamiltonskatingclub.org and the membership page, you'll see our rates. And then um, our membership chair, Kim Pike, is working closely with us on simplifying that page. So that'll be updated hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, let's see, any other questions? Uh, Patty said, well, the current test session, oh yes. So we have a test session scheduled at this point um, from um, May 29th, but um, it that does depend on when the rinks reopen and um, how much time people feel that they have to prepare. So we may be looking to move that until May, uh, to June. And we want to make sure that we keep this as um, positive as possible for everyone and give them a chance to really get their feedback under them. But any other questions? Any comments? I'll hit unmute all if I can figure out how and just yikes. First time hosting, forgive me. Um, and We'll see if anybody has any last minute comments. Oh, no, I haven't signed it. Okay, if you have a question, throw it in the, in the box for a second. And otherwise we will all thank you so much for joining us today. And um, we hope to ho host more of these, but in the meantime, we've got a really good starting place with some great information and, and know that as people's interest grows, we'll continue to add programming. Um, there are plenty of other disciplines that we haven't even begun to um, touch here, theater and ice and um, being one of them. And, and they're all things that we aspire to bring to our skaters if our skaters wanna do them. So um, keep, us, keep us busy folks, cause we wanna, keep your, we wanna keep your skaters happy and active and engaged. Thank you again so much. And, um, Scott, I'll unmute you and you can, oh, come on, unmute. Oh, there we go. I can unmute myself. <sighs> there we go. All right. Hey, um, you know, it's, it, it just, I, I just want you to know, um, I lead with gratitude always. These are, um, crazy times that are going to affect us in some way, um, to, uh, make us more in touch with our blessings and to be hungry to get back to a life that uh, has been interrupted. But uh, the main thing I want you all to know is just how um, how I value each and every one of you for the roles you play in this extraordinary opportunity that we have to build something very unique. Um, but you all are tireless in your efforts and um, I am just so grateful for this opportunity to serve you in in any and every capacity that I possibly can but um, thank you for your uh, you know your commitment for your contributions and for you know just growing in quality and, and ability all the time I'm just um, humbled and and just so honored by all of you so thank you for your contributions that's it <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Yay. All right. Is that it? Are we done? That's it. <clears throat> Can't wait to see you at the rank or next Zoom call. <laughs>